Good afternoon. Lovely people of Kenya University. Dr. Malik is my name, and I'm your statistics tutor this afternoon. This afternoon, I'm here to clarify some aspect of statistics that is bothering our mind, so that it will become a mere formality for us. So first of all, we would like to look at some general terms in statistics. So I would like to explain the name statistics itself. So when we say statistics, we are saying that statistics is a science of collecting, organizing, analyzing and interpreting data in order to make decisions. So as rational beings, we can't just make decisions without what analyzing it. So let me use this example. I've opened my new company, that's a cake company. So on my first product, I was able to sell them all. I can't just make or sit down and make a clarification that my product is out of what quality or is, is the best. If I want consumers to come and patronize my goods, I have to do what a statistics. I have to go out and do a survey. So I have to develop a questionnaires. I will go outside and give it to my customers to know their take about my my, my products. So if let's say I'm able to interview thousand customers and out of the thousand, six hundred are saying that the sugar content in my product is high, and hundred are saying that the sugar content is low, and let's say three hundred are saying that the sugar content is moderate. Then I have to sit down, I have to organize this fact I've gotten. I have to interpret it and say, oh, since majority of them are saying that the sugar content is high, then it means I have to reduce my sugar content. So this will aid me to uh, come up with a meaningful uh, information. So this is simply about statistics. And as statistics too, we have a term called population. When we say population, we are saying that population is a list of all outcomes that are of interest. The important aspect here is that are of interest. So if I consider a particular group to be my point of interest, that group is called my population. Example, if I want to do a survey on KNC campus to know the speed of the Wi-Fi, the thought of the students about how the Wi-Fi runs, and I went to campus and I do this survey, the entire campus on KNC campus is my population. Let me give this example too. If I want to do a survey and see how Social work level 100 students react to the lecturer's assessment. And here, my point of interest is all level 100 students who read social work. So every student who reads social work as their either major or minor courses is classified to be my population. So population is a list of all outcomes that are of interest. So it can be measurements, it can be counts, and so on. The next aspect is a sample. When we say a sample, a sample is a subset of a population, or a sample falls part of a population. So, let me use this example too. If I want to interview students on campus to know the speed of the Wi-Fi, here my point of interest is the entire student on campus, and the entire student on campus signifies my population. So let's say at the end of my interview, I was able to interview 500 students. The 500 students is classified as a sample. Why? Because they form part of the population. This I hope you we get the example. Okay, we have another term to we call it a parameter. When we say a parameter, we are saying that a parameter is any number that describes a population characteristics. So any number that describes a population characteristics is called a parameter. What I'm trying to signify here is that parameter goes with population. So let me use this example so that it will become a mere formality for us. So we all know that this year there will be a graduate. So the 2021 graduates, you see initially all the graduates, they used to take 500 CDs as their national service fee. So the government of Ghana came and made an announcement that all graduates who are completing this year, they, they are, they are, their salary has been increased from 500 CDs to 700 CDs. So this increment of their salary will affect every graduate who will complete this year. This signifies what a parameter because it describing an aspect of what a population. So the increase will not affect parts and leave part. It will affect everybody. And since it's affecting everybody, it means it's what is a parameter because it is linked with what a population. Another term is called what a statistic. When we say a statistic, a statistic is any number that describes a sample characteristics. So as parameter goes with population, statistic also goes with what? A sample. Let me use this example. This year, graduates, we all know that the law students, 
their tenure in school is seven years. So the government of Ghana made an argument that their salaries will be increased from 700 cities to let's say 1,000 Ghana cities. And with this, the increment is only affecting the law students. This example signifies what a statistic. Why? Because the law students, they are part of the graduate they will graduate with this year. And the increment is not affecting every graduate, but only the law students. And the law student is part of the population on campus or the graduate as a whole. So this signifies what a statistic. So as parameter goes with the population, sample also goes with what a statistic. So please, I hope you get the difference. Good. Then let's go to types of data. And as statistics, we have two main types of data. The first one is qualitative data, and the second one is quantitative data. When we say a data set is qualitative, it means it assumes non-numerical values. What I'm trying to signify here is that it cannot be counted. It's only attributes. So, example, if we say nationalities of students in a class, it's an example of what? A qualitative data. Why? Because the nationalities of students in a class cannot be counted. If I said color of an eye, color of an eye is what? It's a qualitative fact data. Because it's what? It's non-numerical. Place of birth. Place of birth is also what? Qualitative white because it's non-numerical. The color of my shirt. If I said the color of my shirt is black, we cannot count black. It's non-numerical. So when we say a data set is qualitative, it means it's assumed non-numerical values, meaning it cannot be counted. It's only attributes. The opposite side of it is what? It's quantitative data. When we say a data set is quantitative, it means it assumes numerical values, meaning it can be counted. An example is what? It's measurement, height, temperature, distance, and length. These are all countable what? attributes. We can count them. We can count the temperature of the body. We can count what? The length of a table. These are all what? Digits. So when we say a data is quantitative, it means it assumes numerical values, meaning it can be counted. So these are what? The two main types of data that we have under statistics. Let's go to what? The branches of statistics. Under statistics, we have two main branches. The first one is what? A descriptive statistics, and we have what? An inferential statistics. When we say descriptive statistics, we are trying to say that it's when tables and charts are used to what? Organize, summarize, and what? Interpret data. When I say tables and charts, they can be what? A frequency distribution table. That's what? The aspect of the table. When I say a chart, it can be what? A pie chart or a bar chart. So when these values or when these means are used to what? Summarize, organize, and interpret the data, we call it what? A descriptive aspect of statistics. The other aspect of statistics as a branch is called what? The inferential statistics. When we say inferential statistics, we are saying that using a sample to draw a conclusion about what? a population. So when part of the population is used to describe the entire population, it's termed as what? An inferential statistics. Let me use the example. Right now, let's say we are here, we are studying, then five boys are going. The five boys going is classified as what? As a population because they are five in number. And that's our point of interest. So once they are going, one of them just screamed. You see, that one, the person who screamed is called what? It's a sample because he formed part of the population. Because the guy screamed, you see, like, we all think like, ah, like how? This guy, how? You know we are learning, you are making this noise. Then it means that all the people we are working with, they are all the same, they, they are all the same as you. So we are using that guy who is a sample to describe the entire what, population, the entire guy who we are going. So that's what? An inferential statistics. So using a sample to describe the entire population is called what? An inferential statistics. The next aspect we look at is the levels of measurement under statistics. Under statistics, we have four main levels of measurement. The first one is the nominal level of measurement. The second one is the ordinal level of measurement. Our third aspect is what? Is the interval level of measurement. And the last one is what? Is the ratio level of measurement. Let's take them one after the other. When we say a level of measurement is nominal, we are trying to say that it is qualitative data only. So a nominal level of measurement is qualitative data only, meaning it cannot be counted. It's only attributes. Example is what? It's names of items in the shop. When I say names of items in the shop, biscuits, willow, needle, these, these are all attributes. Names of cars, 
Cola, we have Benz, we have Mercedes. These are all what? Names of what? Of cars. They are all attributes. Names of students in a class. Names of students in a class is an example of what? a nominal level of measurement. The marital status of nurses in what? In a hospital. This is what? It's a nominal level of measurement because it's only what? An attribute. The next aspect is what? Is the ordinal level of measurement. When we say a level of measurement is ordinal, we are trying to say that it contains what both qualitative aspect and what the quantitative aspect. So it's both qualitative and quantitative. So with the ordinal level of measurement, there is what there is a rank, there is an order, because we can rank them and we can order them. Example: When we are asked to go and name the first best five schools in the world, the first best five schools in the world. You see, we can't just write the schools like that. We have to what, order them. One, let's say the school comes. Two, the name of the school what will follow. Three, the name of the school what will follow. So the numerical aspect is what is the quantitative aspect, and the name of the school is what is the qualitative what, aspect. So when we say a level of measurement is ordinary, we are trying to say that it's both qualitative and quantitative. This is what we are trying to get me. Okay. So the next level of measurement is what is the interval level of measurement. When we say a level of measurement is what is an interval, we are trying to say that it is what quantitative data only. So an interval level of measurement is quantitative data only, meaning it can be counted. It assumes numerical values. An example is what is an IQ scores of students in a class. So the scores of students in a class is an example of an interval level of measurement. Why? Because it can be counted. Another example is what is the cost of items in a, in a what in a shop. The cost of items in a shop is example of what an interval level of measurement. Why? Because it can be counted. The last level of measurement is the ratio. With the ratio level of measurement, we are saying that it is similar to the interval level of measurement, meaning it is also what quantitative. But the only difference or the only slight difference between the interval and the ratio is that. The interval contains what only what did why fix what figures but with the ratio it contains what decimals so for the interval we can have let's say a number like 10 but for the ratio we can have let's say 10.1 1.2 so the ratio level of measurement is similar to the interval but it contains decimal an example is what is the salaries of nurses every nurse salary that don't come in the first price why because once their money passed through what the controller and account department office, they are being what deducted what tax. And when these tax are deducted from their money, the money will not come in the first price. Definitely, there will be what a decimal point in the money. So if you're supposed to receive let's say two thousand Ghana cities, and because you pay tax, your money will come let's say like one nine seven point something something. So that point, that decimal that we have, means that it's what it's a ratio level of measurement. Another example is what is pages of what of novel books. When we say pages, pages we see we have subunits in what in pages. So let's say we have one, one point one, one point two. So pages of novels or of what of a magazine is an example of what a ratio level of measurement. Okay, please. I hope you are enjoying the tutorial. Let's go to what data collection what tools. So under statistics, we have what four main data what collection tools. We have an experiment, we have observational study, we have a survey, and we have simulation. We have experiments. So let me explain the experiment. When we say experiment, experiment is where what part of a population is taken and what they are studied to know what the effect of it. So it's when part of a population is taken, and this part that has been taken has been what is being what assigned to a treatment to what to know the effect of it. So this, let me give this cla uh, classical example. So let's say we see uh, we have a hospital, and in the hospital, the room, we have 100 COVID-19 patients there. So you see, in this COVID era, countries are trying to come up with what, vaccines. So let's say a country comes with a vaccine, and they want to try and see the effectiveness of, of the vaccine. So they will go to this what, what, where we have this COVID-19 patient, and they what, select what? Five out of out of the thousand. 
So the entire town there is what is a population. So the five they what they selected is what is a sample. So they what they will select these five out of the thousand. They want they what inject them and uh, isolate them. So they will isolate them let's say for let's say two days. And let's say when the day what ends, they will go and test them and see that is the vaccine working or not. This is what is an experiment. Trying to know the effect of what of something is called what an experiment. The next one is observational study. With observational study is when what a subject critically what observes. With observational study, we don't use what scientific means. You just use your physical eye to what to just observe things. An example is what is when one is what solving a puzzle. When you are solving a puzzle, you don't need any scientific approach to solve a puzzle. You just need to observe and what and solve the puzzle. So that's what an observational study. So when one is solving a puzzle, that person doesn't need any calculator or not. You just need to what observe critically and what and solve the puzzle. The third aspect of data collection is a survey. With the survey, responses are what are taken in order to what to make a decision. So let's say we have a president, Abu Fado. So if we want to what assess the performance of Abu Fado, we have to do what a survey. So we go out, then what we develop what a questionnaire to what to the citizens of what of Ghana. And they what they will show their what the assessment of the president. So based on what on the on the survey we are conducting, based on the response that we receive, will help us know the performance of what of the president. So that's what a survey. Going out to get what responses in order to what help you make what a decision is what is a survey. The last aspect is what is simulation. When we say simulation, simulation we do it what with technological aspects. It's more about computing. An example is when one is being told to what to study what the changing patterns of planes what in the, in the air. If you are asked to what study the changing patterns of what of an aeroplane in the air, you can't just stand and look in the air and say that when this aeroplane is coming and the other one is coming, they will not crash or they will crash. No, this one it it means more what computing aspect. It means more what technology. So when we are talking about what technological aspects. We're talking about what more computing aspect we are talking about what simulation so these are what the what data collection tool that we have we have an experiment we have observational study we have a survey and we have simulation